basket? My name is Luisa Kaiser, but now most people call me Dot Solavi, although neither of those are my given name. My mother named me Da Buddha. I will speak more on that later. You may think I am fat, but I do not think 300 pounds is too heavy for a woman 90 years of age. People tell me I was born in the 1820s or 30s, although no one can say for sure. I often think about life as it was when I was young. My people lived in the mountains around the lake you call uh, Lake Tahoe in the summer and in the valleys below on the east side of the mountains in the winter. We ate whatever food we could find, including wild celery, wild sugar beets, wild sweet potatoes, and, wi and wild potatoes. We also ate what we could fish from the lake and hunt in the woods and sagebrush. But our most important food were the pine nuts. I have some pine nuts. The elders told stories around the campfire. It was from them that I learned to make baskets. At that time, I did not think anything about my life would ever change, but I was not that old when I saw Dagasu Weti, or the white faces, for the first time. My nephew and I were on a hill overlooking the valley you call Carson Valley, when we saw some strange men riding down the hill below. Us. We, who are they? I asked. I don't know, answered my nephew. Why don't we go see? We ran down the hill, the sagebrush whipping our legs. When we arrived at the bottom, we could see that the men were riding strange creatures. At that time, I was not familiar with horses. But since then, I have grown to know them quite well. The men on the horses were wearing strange clothes, dark blue, not like our brown skins. We saw that they had pale faces, more pale than any man I had ever seen before. Suddenly, one of the horses reared and struck my nephew with a hoof as hard as stone. He stumbled and fell. I knelt over him. Are you okay? I asked. I'm fine, he muttered. After, after he got up, the man in charge immediately gave me three brass buttons as an apology. I still have the buttons. Years later, men told me that the man I had seen may have been John C. Fremont, a famous white explorer. After that encounter, I saw many more white people. Most moved on, simply asking for a guide to the land they called California. But some stayed. They cut down our pine nut trees to use, for use as firewood, to build their houses, and for their mines. We had no choice but to work for the white people, since we could no longer make a living on our own. I worked as a helper for miners' wives. During that time, I married and had two children, but my husband and children died of diseases brought by the white man. 
Some years later, I met a man named Charlie Kaiser. So, uh, we decided to marry, but since Charlie was half white, I had to take on a white man's name to marry him. I chose Louisa Kaiser. Some time after I married Charlie, I met a man named Abe Kong and sold him some of my baskets. He said he would like more of my work. We made a deal. I would s sell him all of my baskets and he would pay for my living expenses, such as housing, food, and water. I did not sell him, give him all of my baskets. <laughs> I saved a few to sell for myself. <laughs> Sometime after I met Mr. Kong, I saw a beautiful mannequin in a store window. Obviously, all I had to do to look like that mannequin was wear what it was wearing, a corset. I went to Mr. Kong. Mr. Kong, I said, I want one of those. He answered, why would a woman of your ample size want a corset? <laughs> Because, I answered, I want to look like the mannequin. Mr. Cohn immediately placed a special order for me because he knew that if I stopped, that was angry, I would stop making baskets. And he wanted my baskets, for they were worth thousands of dollars. I could never understand why. They were completely useless. They had small, round bottoms grew wide in the middle, and grew small again for a small hole at the top, completely useless for gathering. Still, he placed a special order. I waited eagerly for the corset to arrive. When it finally did, I immediately began wearing it. After three days, I still did not look like the mannequin. <laughs> so I returned the corset to Mr. Conn, saying, This does not work. Take it back. <laughs> I have a basket that I call my mad basket. I was working on this <coughs> basket when Charlie was arrested and sent to jail. It does not have a round bottom. The pattern is irregular and stitches are une uneven. When Charlie was released, I finished the basket correctly. I have lived through the decline of the ways of my people. I have lived through what many others have died through what many others have died. Through all, I have made baskets and I intend to continue the rest of my life. Do you have any questions? I do not remember what it meant. It has been a long time since I was called the Buddha. What do you use to make your baskets? What do you use to make your baskets? <laughs> I use willow thread for the white, red bud for the red thread, and bracken root for the black thread. I don't think I have any black bracken root right now. Did you come from a big family, like brothers and sisters? Not that big. Did you make any, uh, did you leave other things besides baskets? Not much. I did used to, but they are not as useful anymore. How did you choose the designs for the baskets? I thought about what I wanted to make and made it, kind of like the belt. I did not use a pattern to make this belt. How many brothers and sisters do you have? The exact number? I don't know. I did not count. Mm -hmm. 